I'm Marie Farr, currently living in Flaxton on the Blackall Range where I have a studio and make art. These days it's printmaking primarily because of the logistics and the size. For me, the process of making art is addictive. It's just something you're compelled to do. It's a process you get totally involved in. You get involved in expressing an idea. You get involved in the problem solving of the process. The rest of the world just tends to disappear. It's just quite addictive. You enter into almost a different state when you're making artworks and doing artworks and um, it is quite addictive. I grew up on a farm in the wheat belt. It was marginal rainfall. And when I was a kid, I rode a horse through the bush prior to going to boarding school and went for miles and miles and miles. And it was just magic. So over the years, the farmers gradually cleared more and more and more and more. And that environment was basically almost destroyed. So that then led me to comment on that. And so I did an artist's book that shows that over from about um, 1800s right through the present day, the destruction, and I named it Gimlet after a particular tree that grows in the area. It's a beautiful tree. It's got this twisted trunk and, um, oh. mm. very sad, very sad. It's all gone, you know. It's just cleared. And what for, you know, wheat, making wheat, sheep, you know. Um, we've lost so much. And now I hear, you know, young people are getting um, depressed about climate change. Well, yes, they've lost a lot of their heritage, you know. It's, it's gone, destroyed. I made several installations relating to environment. There was one in particular that was a large dome that would be probably the height of this ceiling, the top of it, made out of pieces of aluminium and then covered in a, in a parachute. You would walk inside it and I put thick red sand on the base of it and I had sound uh, by a woman called Sarah Hopkins who gave me permission to use that. It had these cocoon nests, so it was a nurturing environment. But you walk through this crunchy salt um, and at the time I was teaching at TAFE, I was doing admin at TAFE, and I had all these pro formas to fill out that just, I end up taking a lot of the scrap home and pasting it around bamboo poles, which represented the denuded landscape, because that's what was happening. It was, the land was going to salt and the trees were dying. And so that was a response to that, again, West Australian bush where I um, grew up and saw it happening over a period of a lifetime, basically. Those who do not have power over the story that dominates their lives, power to retell it, to rethink it, deconstruct it, joke about it and change it as times change, truly are powerless. A quote from Salman Rushdie. Once Upon a Time is a series of stories from the very early years of my childhood, around seven to eight years of age. A magical time when all my senses were acute to the world around me while growing up on a wheat and sheep farm in Western Australian bush. The smallest things were examined in great detail. The carnivorous sundews, jug and donkey and purple enamel orchids, spiders and tadpoles and other insects, reptiles, bird tracks in the sand. It is now so long ago and far away, much in a world that no longer exists. I don't think one suddenly realises that they're an artist. It's just a natural growth. You love to draw, you love to observe, you feel things, and then your artwork just becomes an outlet for that. It's just a natural progression. It's not, um, oh, I'm going to art school and now I'm an artist. It's just, uh, you don't even need to have any training. You, it's just innate within you.